church. I know we've been already here a while. We're going to jump right into the word. Pastor Nate, I'm excited to share with you this morning. You know, something that when Landon was talking uh, just a moment ago, just reiterated the thought that I've been having in the last little bit, just about how Jesus said, um, upon this rock, the revelation of Jesus Christ, who you say he is, because it matters who you say Jesus is. He says, I will build my church. And I just thought it was so interesting, <clears throat> even just when he was talking about where you're, what you're doing, what you're, where your heart's attached, what you're invested in amidst uh, storms and winds and all the chaos of today. The church is built upon a rock. And when anything that's built upon the rock is going to do what? Stand. No matter the storm, no matter the wind. So I, I talk about a great place to invest. So hey, we're in part two of foundations, building strong with God. How many of you want to be with God? You know, God, he, Jesus says, <clears throat> or God said, hey, I'm going to send you one, and his name will be called Emmanuel. There's an announcement, God with you. But how many of you know it's important for you and I to get with him? So we're going to jump right in this morning. Um, I, I want to just start out. How many of you want to build right? How many of you, you know, how many of you know, if you're building a home, you, let's say you had, let's say you had $300,000 to build a house. That was your budget and it wasn't going to strap you uh, and you were going to get to build a brand new house. Are you, who wants to hire a builder that it's their first house? I mean, just trying it out. Nobody? Now, how many of you want to hire a builder that, that has some wisdom, some knowledge, some experience, some understanding uh, to get you out of the ground and, and to put the thing right? Well, the Bible tells us this in Proverbs. It says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. If you want to make the right decisions, you and I are going to have to establish this truth or, or, or really have a, a reverential awe or trembling even at what God says. Here, here, let me ask you this. If I was uh, to take a sword and just kind of, right, if you were to come up here, would that kind of just make you a little nervous? No, nobody? Like if, you, if you're, I mean, if someone pulls a knife, you switch, you know, they got this one, they don't, how do you work this thing? Poop, and out pops this blade, like right there. How many of you make, make you a little nervous, wouldn't it? That's, that's just having a sword. You know, this is a double-edged sword. This should cause you and I to tremble. It's sharp. It, it has the ability to, to reveal. Anytime the word of God is spoken, the Bible tells us it actually uh, reveals our hearts. That's what happens every time we come together. When the word of God is spoken, our hearts are put on, um, laid open before ourselves. Because sometimes... Um, you can lie to your, your heart, but your heart won't lie to you. And, and what happens is when the word of God is spoken, our hearts are laid open, and then there's something that's required, and it's called a decision. And um, that's what we're going to talk about this morning. So if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Hebrews chapter, <clears throat> chapter 5. We we're in this uh, series called Foundation, Building Strong with, with God. And um, if you're going to hear what I'm going to talk about today, um, I, I, any conversation you and I have, uh, if we're going to try to fit a conversation and, and the Word of God and the teaching of the Word of God in a 30-minute in a window, you're going to have to hear it from the character of God. You, there's no, there's no uh, effective communication uh, in, a, in, in a box of time, if you will. Uh, that's, that it, uh, uh, there is not a message. This is a conversation. How many know conversations are more ongoing? But it is required, if, it's gonna, if communication is going to be effective, that you hear, the, hear it through the character of the one speaking or who, who spoke these words. Even when correction comes. You know, uh, I correct my kid uh, and my children because I want them going the right direction. As a child, you, you, uh, we're not buddies. We're, I'm, I'm dad. I'm not asking you. I'm telling you. And, and there's going to come a time that I no longer tell you, but I'm letting you, I'm, I'm training you to transfer dependence. Right now you're dependent upon this father, but my goal is to get you dependent upon the father. And so there's a time of uh, when, you, when you step out and, and we get to watch that. That's the same thing that as we grow up in Christ, there's a, there's a, where he, he, you are told very much what to do. But as you grow up in Christ and as you grow up spiritually, what ends up happening is you begin to do and you begin to pray your will. You ask anything according to his will, but what happens is that you, 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 there's such a delight, Psalms 37, 4, uh, of your heart in the Lord. You delight your self in the Lord. He grants those desires and he puts them in your heart to where you two are aligned. So you think like your father. 
And that's ultimately the goal of being a Christian is that we would be little Christ here on this earth, that we would have an approach and a love for people and, and an approach and say the same things as our Father. Have you ever been in the, the, a fight with your wife or your husband or somebody? Usually it's got to be family because this is, otherwise you won't really get this. Maybe you've heard this. If you're not married, you've heard your mom and dad talk like this. You're just like your mother. You're just like your, so like that would be my statement, right, to my wife. You're just like your mom, okay, like or, or so, in some kind of thing, like, uh, or it's just like that just, you know, have you, how many of you have ever heard that? Anybody? Usually it's not like a, a, a great statement, you know. It's like the, it's not a compliment. <laughs> but what happens is, it's the truth, is we become like our father. We become, we do, we become like our father. And the question is, who's your father? In other words, who's telling you what to do? As a young child, uh, the, and as a baby, a babe in Christ, so many times we think we're, we're the toddler twos, like we just can have our way, and we think that is the way. Matter of fact, that's what we see in the culture in which we live today. Everyone gets a trophy. The spanking's gone out the window. Even though the Bible says, spare the rod, you spoil the child. What do you want for dinner? Um, okay, we're gonna, you want macaroni? Okay, I know I made steak, but we're going to make macaroni. You don't like macaroni and you don't like steak? Okay, you want chicken? Okay, and you don't want chicken? You don't want that? Oh, you want salad? Okay, no, you're going to eat what's in front of you because there's something about honoring your father and mother, but somehow it got switched around and we're going to honor the kids. The Bible talks about honoring your father and mother. This is a, it's, it, it, it sounds so crazy to say, oh, come on. I mean, we, we, we leave and we, we are, our kid, we'll run all over the world for our kids. But when the Lord says, don't forsake the assembly, well, that's optional. I'm telling you, what, we're, what we've lost is learning and what we, as, as the church, and we're talking about foundations, building strong with God, is who's your father? You remember Jesus said that to the church or what would have been, the, the, you're of your father the, oh wow, really? You know what, 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 what it looks like to have a father is who do you take your direction from? Yeah. Yeah. So good. Are, you the, are you a self-governed individual? Hang with me here. Hebrews chapter 5, uh, 12 uh, through 14. I'm just going to paraphrase here for, for time's sake. But he says, hey, guys, you ought to be teaching right now. If you, in other words, that, that it, is your, it is the Father's goal that you and I would be teachers. Let me say it this way. It is the Father's goal that you would have students. Or that there would be those that you would look after. This is a sign of spiritual maturity. That you would look after somebody. And that you would communicate to them core doctrine. Okay? You would communicate to them what, who Christ is and what he says. Not just whatever you think, but there would be a communication. But he goes on to say in verse 14 or 13, he says, But yet... You need to be taught again. You ought to be teachers, but you need to be taught again. Matter of fact, you need milk, and you ought to be ought to be able to use meat and 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 eat meat. But that only comes through exercise of the word. Yeah. Exercise. You know what it means to exercise? It does not mean okay to buy thirty pound dumbbells and put them in the closet. That's not exercise. How many of you know, we, we, okay, two years ago, we bought a, I bought my wife for Christmas an exercise bike. Not, that wasn't like, it was because she wanted it. It wasn't like you need to get stuff. <laughs> it was like, it was like one of those ones that has a screen, kind of like a Peloton, but it wasn't a Peloton. Anyway, and so, but the, the thing is, is we don't use it. Fact, we'd rather run outside. And we found it just sits up there. It's really great. It's a Norda Track one. It's, it really should just be sold on eBay. Anyway, uh, there's a plug. So you want a really great deal on the exercise bike. <laughs> I mean, his classes and everything. Just like the, all right, here we go. Um, but he says, it's through exercise. It's through doing. Exercise is doing. You, you and I grow when we hear the word and then we do the word. When the word of God is spoken, our hearts are laid open. And there should be a little bit of, that's God talking to me. What are you going to do with that? 
That's what happens. And that's where we're going to get to this morning in Hebrews chapter 6. He says this, Therefore, I want to leave, I want to leave the doctrine of Christ. I want to leave the principles or the elementary things of the doctrine of Christ. I would like to move on. I would like to go from kindergarten in first grade. How many of you know, uh, I, I, I don't want to down on kindergarten and first grade. Matter of fact, I put some pictures on my fridge of coloring sheets outside the lines. I think we got to celebrate the growth. I mean, we see this as a father. We, we celebrate our children's growth. When one plus one is two, we're not like, yeah, you dummy. Of course. I mean, when are you going to get to like, what's 10 times 10? You're telling your four-year-old. 10 times 10. Uh, okay, what's nine times eight? Uh, no, you celebrate the one plus one. And look at mama. Look, look, look. I got, I got 10 out of 10. One plus two, one plus three, one, and went all the way through. Where there's a celebration of getting these basics down. And there should be, even here uh, in the church, there should be a celebration. And the, these, what, we're gonna talk, what we're talking about in foundations is these foundational truths or these basic principles that if we don't have established in our life, not, we will never be able to grow and partner with God the way that he intended us to. You were chosen for this time, for this hour, not to just breathe. And let me just read here. He says, therefore, leaving the principles or the elementary uh, uh, things of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on to perfection or grow and not lay again the foundation. Or, and that's what we're talking about. That those, the, the things that should be set in stone. That's what foundation. It's a setting of, in stone. Okay. Bedrock. Uh, not laying again the foundation of, number one, repentance. Repentance. We're six things we're talking about. Repentance from dead works. Okay. Faith towards God, <clears throat> faith towards God, doctrine of baptisms, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. Now, I, I'm gonna, I'm, we're going to talk about number one and two this morning. Obviously, we, we don't have a, 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 a great amount of time, so it's probably, there's going to probably be some spillover. But I want to talk just for a moment on the very last one there, eternal judgment. Sometimes you and I think we aren't going to be judged. You very much... And we're going to talk about this. You very much will be judged. Every Christian, every believer will be judged. Now, you won't stand before the great white throne judgment, which is, determines whether you're, for your righteousness, because righteousness is from Christ. But you will stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And guess what? What you did here on this earth, the good work, the things that would remain, they're going to stay. And so sometimes we think, oh, I'm not going to be judged because the blood of Christ is... No, you're not going to be judged for righteousness. You're like, you got an in, you got a ticket for heaven, but your stewardship, what you're over, uh, your rewards, the, all of those things that he has you, it has to do with what you do here and now. Yeah. And, and, and it's, it's extremely irresponsible to tell people, to tell the church, as a pastor, the Bible tells us that he's given gifts to men, uh, uh, these gifts, pastor, teacher, prophet, evangelist, um, apostle, I think I said them all, uh, but it's for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry. In other words, that you and I would accomplish what we are called to do, that, we, that our, our ministry, our works would be, would, would be aided. I, m like nothing else, I want what God's called you to do for you to fulfill it. Because if you, if what I communicate doesn't cause a spur um, or, or a, um, a, a course direction, a correction, almost like you would have your work in a plow or whatever, for you to move forward and you to move forward in line with what God has designed you for, then what I'm called to do is not being, I'm not fulfilling what God set me here to do. See, a pastor uh, is like a shepherd, the Bible tells us, and they have a staff and a rod. There's a correction, there's a, there's a tending, and there's a, there is the goal of a shepherd is that they would be fruitful and they would accomplish what, what their purpose is. Are you accomplishing what God's asked of you? Let me tell you, you won't be unless God's word carries with it final authority in your life. Let's talk this morning about repentance and, and, and define what that is. A doctrine, and doctrine is not just what you believe, it's what you believe and what you communicate. 
It's not just the doctrine is what are you saying? What do you say uh, about repentance? And repentance can sometimes feel like, oh my gosh, this is going to be super intense, super um, uh, like, I mean, we should all be weeping and all. No, listen, listen, this is what repentance is. It's not just a change in direction, okay? It's a decision. The most core, basic uh, definition uh, that you and I have to understand uh, about repentance is this. It's simply a decision. Look, look, look at here in um, Acts uh, chapter 17. Acts 17 verse 30. In times past, in other words, when there was, uh, <clears throat> in, in times past, God overlooked the ignorance um, where people didn't know and mercy ruled and there was like this, this gap of, of, of law and then even where there was a voice where the prophets weren't here on the earth and they just didn't know and people were destroyed. But here he says, here's what's, here's what's required. What's required? But now he what? Who commands? Who, 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 who has the right to command? The Lord, the King of kings, and the Lord of lords. He's the one that commands all people everywhere to repent. To make a decision. He commands every person everywhere. Landon mentioned it this morning about there's going to be a day where every knee will bow and every tongue will confess the lordship. The, the thing is, is you, that you might not come, he might not be your lord. Even though he is the lord, you might not. He might not be your lord. You might be, you might go to hell. He, G, Satan will confess. Every demon will confess. When they, when they left heaven and they, uh, with, with Lucifer and they decided to call Lucifer lord. No, 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 no. There's going to come a day. And he says he commands all men everywhere to what? To repent. And so I want to, this is, a, this is so foundational for you and I. In order to follow Christ, you and I have to, first and foremost, make a decision of how, we're, how and this is what repentance is, is how I live my life. How do I decide? How, how do I live? I have to, I, I'm going to have to make a decision. You know, evangelists don't, don't um, they, you know what they record? They don't record salvations. What do they record? How many blank for Christ? How many, somebody help me out. Decisions. decisions. How many decisions for Christ today? How many decisions for Christ? Even from, from, this is even, as I'm looking at these core doctrines, and I'm studying them again, and I'm looking at it again and review, and I, I, I'm convic convicted in my own heart, and even how I've given an invitation to Christ. Oh, invite. I want to invite you to Christ. Just, invite, just an invitation. Instead of putting it on you to make a decision. He already came. The question is, do you want to come? Do you want to, or will you give him the place that he, that he has? Like, what does it look like to decide for Christ? What does it look like to be born again? It means you had made a decision today. It's not, it's not about tears and guilt. That's not repentance. Repentance is not emptying a box of Kleenex because you're sorrowful. Judas, the Bible says that he, he was repentant and he went and hung himself. But it's not the same word repent as, it, he, as you see here in Acts. It's one that he was so overcome, he, he had changed. Meta, just hang with me, I'm not going to go through all the Greek and all this. But the, 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 it's made up of two words and meta means a change. But then the, the next word is one of emotion. That is, he was so filled with emotion and so filled with regret. regret. That he, that that led his life. Yeah. How many of you know that that emotions are like this? I mean, emotions are like, I'm going to eat right because of the vacation in two months when I go to Cabo San Lucas. You know what happens? Like you hit the P90X for like three weeks. And then you're like, I'm good enough right now to where I'm not embarrassed. We're going to go eat, and we're going to come back. And until next time, we'll be all right. We're going to eat. We're going to do our thing. But if there's a decision, 
No, this, this, this is for real. That's like an emotion. I mean, even when you entered into a covenant with your wife, when, you didn't, when, you, when you're emotionally upset or now you're going to throw the divorce card in an argument, you are so immature to threat, to th- threaten a covenant because you're emotional. And then you're back together. I mean, I'm telling you, guys, we got to get past being, Im- being ta- 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 temper tantrum Christians. You know, I want it now, I want it now. And then all of a sudden you're back in the car. It's not, you're fine because you got goldfish. <laughs> like it's got to have to last. Emotions. This is, oh, so many times our lives, we're, we're, we live by, by emotions. God's not looking for you and I to be emotional. He's, he's looking for you and I to make a decision. Will you, and I would even ask you this this morning, have you decided to follow Christ? Have you decided I mean, all of us want the big house and the fancy car, but not all of us want to do what it takes to get it. All of us want streets of gold, but not all of us want to lay down our life. But he requires, he matter of fact, commands everyone to decide. I command you to decide. Who are you going to follow? Who are you going to follow? And when, what happens is, when, when you make that decision, what happens is, it changes how you, how you live your life. Right. What happens is, when, if you have repented, this is so foundational, if you have, if, if, am I calling into question your salvation? I'm calling into question for you to question if you're saved. You better believe it. That's a good thing for a pastor to do, to ask you, did you decide to follow Christ? Make a decision. Because if you decide to follow Christ, this right here must be final authority in your life. If the Word of God is not final authority in your life, you're not saved. Fact. I'm gonna. Br- I could bring out some real hard, hard ones that you know I want to just bump over. Like forgive. If you can't forgive, I can't forgive. That's in there. He says forgive. Yeah, but I don't want to. Okay. Then how are you living your life? I'm not saying it's not. You're not in a hard place. I'm not. But I am saying when the word of God comes to you and you see it, it might be hard. You might be cussing inside and whatever and it might take you a moment to get to that place but you know that that I got to make that move I got to make that move because my life's not my own I got to make that move you know we we quote this all the time it is Ephesians Ephesians it is by grace that you've been saved through what through faith okay this what's faith Faith is you receiving what? If you don't receive it, you don't even got what it takes to to appropriate grace. I'm not talking about uh, your works. I'm talking about your will. This is what repentance is. Repentance is all about your will. It used to be about your works. And he says, now it's not about your works. I paid a price with my son's blood, but it is about your will. What are you deciding? You know we make decisions all the time at where we, when the Bible tells us something, we make decisions whether we're going to follow him or not follow him. It should, the, the, if you are, and I are going to advance and grow up and partner with God, we're going to have to establish the truth, the Bible, as final authority in our lives. Yes. Here's the deal. 
Oh, I have so much to get to. Um, let, let me go to 1 John chapter 1. This is a picture of what it looks like to come to Christ. This is an invitation I'm going to give you to Christ. Ready? 1 John uh, chapter 1, 5 through 10. <clears throat> and this is John. This is... Um, uh, a message of, of one that understood the love of God like probably nobody else. Love, the love of God. And this is even what I'm communicating to you. Uh, again, hearing the love of God. Hey, I love you so much. I just want you to be aware. You, may, you need to make a decision. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I'm commanding you. You don't have a choice. This is a command. Decide. Decide. Have you decided to follow Christ? I, I, he didn't ask for tears and all, all the emotions and all the, listen, just making a decision. You know what? I'm going to follow Christ. I know there's things in my life. Listen, listen look, at, look at the power of what happens when we make a decision. Look at this. Then this is the message which we have heard of him and now declare unto you, okay? That God is light. And in him there's no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him, yet we walk in darkness, we lie and, we, and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all unrighteousness. I want to just pause there. We have, our, our fellowship with him is walking with the light. This is this walking with this. Let's walk with them. Look, let's keep on going here because I'm not trying to get you scared remotely about losing your salvation. Listen, if you make a decision to follow Christ, if you make that decision and you say, not, not mine, Lord, I, I give my life, you're my Lord. Guess what? The Bible says that he would seal you with the Holy Spirit of promise. And there is an outworking of our salvation. We're saved, we're being saved, and we will be saved. The Bible teaches this. Salvation is a work of God, but it is based upon the will of man. But salvation uh, it is not possible apart from lordship. It's a lie to tell you that. It's possible to be born again and not be surrendered to him. Listen to this. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. How many of you could say that you even have, even now, there's, there's times you have sin in your life. You know what sin means? Miss the mark. But this is a, an invitation to Christ. This is not uh, continuing just uh, like every day, every day. This is an invitation I'm telling you about Christ. If you say you're good and you, and you haven't missed the mark and, and you're living a life that you're, you're good, uh, then here's the deal. He says this, um, you dece you're deceiving yourself and the truth is not uh, in us. If we confess, and I, I want to hit on this, if we confess our sins, you know what it means, to, the word confess? If you were to look it up in the Greek, it's two words, homo, okay? Like the word, play, same way we call somebody, you know, homosexual. Homo means of the same, of the same sex or of the homo. But this is homo logia, where we get logic. So we're of the same mind. If I confess my sin... If, if I'm of the same mind that when I see the mark, and I, the mark's here, and I hit here, am I of the same mind to say, I missed the mark, but I'm going to hit the mark? Are you, are you and me of the same mind as Christ? Are we of the same mind where what he says, does he establish the mark? Because that's what it means. Sin is simply miss the mark. Uh, so many times we think of sin as, as uh, see him to knew, that knows what to do and to do good and doesn't do it, that's sin. And the one that's been told, uh, directed. If I was supposed to direct it of the Lord to preach on this this morning and decided to preach on something else, 
I would not be under the lordship of Jesus Christ this morning. And guess what? Would, uh, let me just keep on going here. So if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So in order to come to Christ, you and I have to make a decision to follow him and tell him that we need him. I got to have you. I, I, I miss the mark. I need you. To, not talking about sin. Um, we, we devalue the payment. He is faithful and just. What happens when, when, we, when we make a decision, when we repent, when we come of the same mind to make a decision, your will. My will, your will. Of the same mind. I'm going to take my will and I'm going to surrender it to your will. That's what it looks like to repent. To change the way I think. And he goes on and says this. He says, if we confess our sins, if we become of the same mind about where, what, of our need for a, for a Savior, uh, not just of a Savior, but a Lord, one that would direct our lives and the one that would, would be the lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path, because I am created, I am by design, and I'm in this place for such a time as this with a call, and, and he's ordained me and prepared for me good things to walk in. I need not just a Savior. I need a Lord so that I can walk and I can partner with him and fulfill all that he's called me to do. So if I would confess, if I come into agreement with that under his will, here's what he said. He said, uh, he, not only would he forgive our sins, but he would also cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The blood of Jesus makes us the righteousness of, uh, of God. The blood of Jesus makes us right with God. But unrighteousness often is in our lives when we choose or we, make, we miss the mark. But if we say and come into agreement with what he says, what happens is we, our, 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 our salvation begins to get, we get, our bodies or our salvations begins to be outworked out here. And he cleanses us. That word cleanse is, is the, would be the, the Greek word, uh, which is like, uh, like a catheter. And I, don't, I can't describe, say the word, but it, which means to cleanse. You know, if you were to, to pull out, to pull out, to pull out. You know how you and I begin to look like him? When we say what he says and we come under his word, when I come under his word, what happens is, just as in Ephesians 5, 26 says about how husbands ought to love their wives as Christ loved the church and how he washed us with the water of the word. If there's things in your life that don't match and you've given your heart and you make a decision to follow him and maybe there's habits and there's addictions and whatever, uh, whatever it might be, I'm not here to say that that is keeping you from God. The blood of Jesus paid the price for that. But I am telling you that those things, the wages of sin still produce death in this world. But God would love to wash you. God would love to, to allow you not to, uh, here even in this earth, to not experience that which so many times our decisions become come and let us walk in line and become a light to so many others because our lives look like him. But it's not a work of ourself. It's a washing of the water of the word. It's him cleansing us. You cannot be cleansed apart from this. You can try all you want. You can do, all, do your best. But that's not what repentance is. Repentance is not works. It's will. I will follow you. This will be final authority in my life. Lord, I, this is your will. Not my will, but your will. And every time I see, every time I hear, if you come to church and there's not a decision, I'd ask the question, did the word of God get read? A decision, something. You know, he deals with us. Why? Because he doesn't want us to experience that which sin would want to bring here on this earth. Because he loves us. 
I'm going I'm to close with this. I, 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 I had it all laid out. It didn't work out fully. But I want to close with this. Um, go ahead and turn with me to Luke. Chapter 6 and 7. End of 6 and being in the 7. <clears throat> oh, thank you, Lord. Again, repentance is what? It's a change. It's not just, it, it's making, it's not just a change of mind. It's a decision with your mind. It's a ch- you believe in your heart, but you confess with your mouth. You have to engage your choice. You got to en- engage your chooser. You got to engage. With the, what the Bible tells us uh, in Romans chapter 10, 9 and 10, um, <clears throat> if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, confess. Remember we just looked at confess, homo, homologia of the same mind. If you believe in your heart and confess of the same mind the Lordship, that you say, he's Lord, every knee will bow, but right now, I'm telling you, you're Lord. If you believe in your heart and of the same mind, confess. Jesus as Lord, you would be saved. For it is with the heart man believe, but with the mouth, our will. How do you choose? The set before you, life and blessing, which, and death and cursing. Which one do you want, Landon? You want life or you want death? Which one? Which one? Life. Okay. Which one would you like, Sheena? Would you like death or would you like life? Okay. Chocolate or vanilla, Ev? Would you like chocolate or vanilla? Chocolate. Which one do you want, honey? Just tell me. It's with our heart we believe, but it's with our mouth confession is made. Listen, there is something powerful. The Bible even tells us our mouth steers this whole body. What do you say concerning what he says? What do you say? What do you say concerning forgiveness? What do you say concerning pornography? What do you say concerning tithing? What do you say, I don't know, concerning lying and gossip? What do you say concerning righteousness? What do you can say, and I wanted to get to this concerning, because it's not just repentance, but then it goes in, the next thing is have faith in God. What do you can say, what do you say uh, concerning your works? I got to do it, 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 I got to do it. No, he said, (laughs) what do you say? So many times we put only our faith in, in, in everything based upon all of our shortcomings, but sometimes we need to apply it to what we think what we're trying to attain to. Our faith and our choice and our repentance and our choose of what he says and this being final authority in our life that also has to do with our righteousness. And if by one man's sin death could enter, so too through one man's sacrifice, Jesus Christ, life could reign in you if you so would choose. What do you choose? Have you decided to follow Jesus? No turning back. No turning back. That's the heart of the Father. Luke chapter 6, this is kind of jumping into even next week a little bit, but I I think it's very fitting I'm going to go to Luke 6, um, 46. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Okay, are you hearing this from the loving Father? Because if you aren't, you're not hearing his message. What he goes on to speak of is a house that stands. So a father wants nothing more for his children than that their lives would not be a wreck. I don't want my kid's life to be a wreck. So there's certain things that I'll tell them, don't do that. I told you that. Don't do that. Why? Because I know where that leads. Am I telling them, don't do that because I don't love him? No, because I want his house to stand. I don't want his life a wreck. So here he's calling into question. He's saying, listen, bud, you're calling me Lord, Lord, but you're not doing what I say. So if I'm Lord, 
you need to make that decision when I say something to make a decision to apply it. Okay? So who, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and, and you don't do the things that I say? Uh, if you come to me and hear my sayings, do them. Listen, if you come to me and you came to me, no one comes to the Father unless he draws him. So you came to me, you believed in the goodness of God, and now I'm speaking to you out of my love for you, and I'm giving you a direction. And when you hear them, do them. Surrender your will to them. Now, you're gonna, Paul said, why do I not do the things I want to do? Listen, this is a part of the washing of the water of the word and you allowing this to have final authority in your life. You ever try to wash, I think the best way I can describe it is a, a paint sprayer. There's paint in the hose and you don't understand this, but if you were to look at the hose and you've got to push it out with water. At first, it's a mixture of paint and water. But after a while, and after, after it circulates a little while, what happens is it's clear, clean, Water. By putting the word of God in you, there is a washing and a cleansing. The word does the work. The water does the work. The washing of the water does the work. But you're going to have to put it in you. You're going to have to say, yeah, I want that in my life. I'm going to come to you. I'm going to hear what you say. And I'm going to put that in me. I'm going to say, let's do that. Let's do that. And there's going to be times, even when I clean out a paint sprayer, where there's like a chunk that was caught on a filter because of what I've been through. Because all that was in me that gets spit out, does it mean I'm not being cleaned? No. I'm being cleaned. God's washing me. And God holds me. And He loves me. And this is why He tells me, hey guys, you're calling me Lord, but you're not, when I'm talking to you, you're not doing what I, I say, and I want your house to stand. He is like a man that builds his house on a deep or digged rock and lays a foundation when the floods rise. And the Bible tells us there's things, there's going to be storms and trials and tribulations, but he's overcome. And so are you. Greater is he that's in you. And you know one of the things that's supposed to be in us that will allow us to stand and be in a sense the grab on the rock? It's His Word. It laid a foundation on the rock and when the flood rose, the streams beat upon the house and it could not shake it. I don't want you shaking. It's a father talking. It was founded on the rock, but he that heard and does not do is like a man that's with no foundation, built a house upon the earth, and against the, which the stream did beat, it, it immediately fell, and the ruin of that house was great. The next chapter, verse uh, chapter seven, it goes immediately into the centurion. And I think there's so much um, uh, symbolism. Centurion, a warrior, a warrior under. A warrior that commands and a warrior under command. And I think that's what you and I are. You know, we are a warrior that commands, but we are a warrior that is under command. All authority in heaven and earth has been given to you. This is what the Bible says. And that's just like Lana was talking this morning. And every knee will bow, but it's time some of these knees bow now. Authority. I'm a one under command, but I'm one that commands. And here you see the centurion, and he begins to talk, <clears throat> and he says, uh, he says, hey, I have a, a daughter that, or I have a, a servant that's sick and, 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 and uh, you don't have to come, but if you would just do what? If you would just say the word. If you would just say the word, my daughter would be healed. I want you to see in verse seven, he says, neither do I, I thought my, uh, worthy to come unto me, but simply say in a word. This is King James. Say in a word. You know what that is? Go. That's a command. Say in a word. Say in a word, and he says what? And my servant shall be healed. Here's, here's the deal. I, I wrote this, and I think this really um, makes great sense. The goodness of God is not just that you, your house would stand, but that you would be partnered with him in his plan for here and now. It's not just that your house would stand. 
It's not just about you. It's about why he came. It's God's will that all men would be saved and come to the knowledge of repentance. But how are they going to hear unless somebody tells them? But you know what? You won't tell them. You won't ask them. Have you decided to follow Christ? Have you ever made a decision to follow Christ? If you don't even know what the Bible says of what it looks like to be saved. It's not that your house would just stand it. We would be part, we would play the part and we would we would be used, that we would grow up and, and we would exercise and we would be walk in our divine destiny. God has prepared good things for you and I to walk in. But it all starts. All, everything, everything here starts upon this, this one premise, and we didn't get to get to this, the, the one and two, but is repentance. It's required for you to decide. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Before we go this morning, I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to ask you what I spoke on. Have you made a decision to follow Christ? I know even now, there's going to be some that would make a decision to follow Christ, but I know even right now there's some decisions and you know what God said about a matter concerning maybe your forgiveness, maybe just things that God's talked to you about. You have to make a decision, and you do. You need to change the, your approach and your mind, and you need to make a decision to follow what God says instead of going your own way. But right now, I'm talking about salvation. If, if you're here this morning and you've never made a decision to follow Christ and say, not my will, but your will in my life. Today would be a great day to decide to follow him and give him your heart. If that's you and you want to make a decision to follow Christ today, I want you to lift your hand. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We got. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And so just you, the Bible says it's with our heart that we believe, but it's with our mouth we confess or we come into agreement with him. And so just say this with me. Say, Jesus, today I give you my life. I believe that you're the son of God that was sent to pay the price that I couldn't. I choose you. Thank you for choosing me. You are my Lord. I look to you for every decision in my life. Lord, if there's any place in my life that I'm not following you. Show me so I can make the adjustment. So I can make the decision clearly, not blinded. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Lord. You know, Repentance is something that is not just when we come to Christ. It should be something that happens every time we see in the Word where we see something and we go, hmm, you know what? The way I've been treating my, my wife, I need to treat her better. That's a decision. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know how I've been talking about them? And put myself here. You know how that is? When every, whenever there's sides, somehow we always end up on top. Hmm. I need to make that adjustment. If what I believe is not causing me to fall more in love with the world, I need to check what I believe. Let's let this, let the, let's let this be our guide. Make that decision. Amen? I get, here's what I guarantee you. Your path 
will shine brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter because you got the light of the word that's here and there. Amen. Thanks for joining us today. Hey, uh, I'm going to dismiss here. Um, and if you need prayer, you can come on up. Love to, I'll be up here with uh, uh, Landon, to just if you need prayer, and, and my wife, Ev. Um, love to pray with you. But if you don't need prayer, you grab your kids. Can you help us get these chairs? Just move to the lobby before we come back at 1. I know that's only like an hour and 20 minutes or whatever. But uh, anyway, we would really love your help if you can. Um, as I told the guys, you don't love Jesus if you don't come. No, not really. Um, have a great Sunday. God bless you.